会，要走向灭亡。The punitive expedition authorized by King Wu received considerable support from many of the local rulers. Holding high the banner of respecting heaven and protecting the populace, King Wu's army set off from the capital of Gaojing and quickly pushed forward to the Shang capital. One of the significant academic results of the early 21st century was the establishment of the exact year of King Wu's punitive expedition. Fortunately, the year was included in an inscription on a huge bronze drum that had been specially made to commemorate the success of the mission. After the area was rid of the old ruler, in the new and relatively united country, the people began leading a happy life, while the notion of respecting heaven and the ancestors and protecting the populace took root in the way the nation was governed. You, for example, ah, he says here, "Water is sacred, as is the land." 就是你这个执政的这个贵族，啊，你不要拿这个水啊当镜子，大家知道这个剑嘛，对吧？以史为鉴，以铜为鉴，你要拿老百姓当镜子，以民为鉴，啊，这就是以民为本啊。另外说，天事，这电视的事，天事自我，民事，老天他看到什么，就是我们人民看到什么，老天就看到什么，天听自我，民听。这样一种精神，在两千多年前这个中国出现，我觉得非常伟大。因为在这个时候，古希腊还处在神话时代。The question became how to go about effectively governing a state that was much larger than theirs had been, much larger even than the old state of Shang they had overthrown. The rulers of the Western Zhou Dynasty came up with an ingenious idea. Establishing a system of fiefdoms. In the early years of the Western Zhou Dynasty, the ruler created more than 70 fief states, 50 of which were ruled by people who had Ji as their surname, all from his own clan. It marked, in fact, the birth of a nation made up of various ethnic groups, in which the Cathay people formed the majority. But with so many fief states, some of them quite distant, how could the country be properly developed? The younger brother of King Wu, Lord Dan of Zhou, came up with a set of rules to cover almost every aspect of the nation, social, religious, political and economic. Zhou Gong is a very straightforward politician. 那么他在这个武王克商之后，就总结，啊，这个殷人王国的教训，就他这个车怎么翻了，他前车之鉴是什么？啊，那么他经过总结呢，就发现主要的、根本的原因，就是他们呢，呃，失德。那么失德就失人心，失人心就亡天下。所以他后来周公就要制定一系列。以道德作为核心的这个制度，那么我们历史上把这样一套制度，啊，叫做治理卓越。Lord Zhou formulated a set of codes for the people to follow. The idea was that based on them, the country could be governed more effectively. These codes have been known ever since as the system of Li and Yue. What precise aspects of social life did Li and Yue cover? The code built around Li and Yue was developed to the point where it could be seen in every activity engaged in by the people, whether it be funerals, burials, social activities, wars or celebrations. The nature of this Li and Yue system meant that it reminded people that they belonged to a particular social stratum and that they had a code to live by. This 
，他把这个德这个东西，他分解成了很多个德目，每一个德目都是可以操作的，啊，比方诚信啊，啊，孝顺啊，啊，那么你在实践这个礼的过程当中，你就一步一步的，啊，成为了一个理性的人。从行为上、言谈举止上来规范，来规范你啊，所以这个礼啊，它是修身的，是吧？比方见到老年人应该怎么样，见到长辈应该怎么样，是吧？见到老师应该怎么样？然后在人家家里出现不幸的事情，比方丧礼，你应该怎么样？啊，那么使你呢，这个始终能够想到，啊，自己的行为。应该是理性的事。After the Shang Dynasty fell to the Zhou Dynasty, the new dynasty had two small states on its borders: one named Yu, the other Rui. The land between these two small states was very fertile, and they had long been locked in a battle over ownership of this tract of land, resulting, of course. In a massive waste of manpower and resources, one day the rulers of both states came to the capital of Zhou in the hope of settling the dispute by getting a judgment from King Wen, the ruler of Zhou. Then, without expecting them to enter the royal palace, they saw a picture of them and were very upset. 让他们非常感慨的景象，啊，就在街上，啊，人们都互相礼让，彬彬有礼。到了朝廷里面，这个大臣之间，啊，都非常融洽，啊，那么这个虞和睿两国的国君呢，他们当时看了以后就非常惭愧，啊，说我们在那里吵来吵去要争抢的东西，恰恰人家认为是可耻的东西。我们赶紧不要去找文王了，啊，这丢人了，啊，我们还是回去自己解决吧，啊，结果他们回去以后，啊，就互谅互让，把这个问题呢化解。To distinguish the difference between the various classes. Different sets of bronze objects were used at banquets, celebrations, and at worship and funeral ceremonies. In any bronze set used for these purposes, the numbers of ding, a vessel for containing meat, and gui, a container for foods other than meat, were rigidly set according to class, and they were never to be confused. This rule about the numbers of vessels lay at the core of the rituals of the Western Zhou Dynasty. 这个里面制度很重要的一点，它它是要体现社会的呃层次的结构，是吧？呃，你比方说啊，我们说的这个，你比方说现在大家都说列鼎，是吧？说是这个用鼎的时候，这鼎本来就是一个吃饭的工具。是吧？特别是一种烹煮的一种器物，是吧？那它炖肉、煮肉，是吧？那么这样的器物呢？可是你比方说，天子就要用九鼎啊，甚至加上三个陪鼎，所谓天子要用十二鼎，是吧？那么天子为什么要用十二鼎呢？是吧？他是不是能吃那么多？他也吃不了那么多，是吧？他是表现的他这个社会社会地位。It was not only the number of ding that marked the status of the owner. It was also the size. Through the bronze objects he used, an owner's social status, obligation, and rights were clearly defined in an unequal society. But how was harmony and peace to be maintained in such an unequal society? The answer was through music. The rulers of this age believed that the function of music was to educate people. 
If the ruler and his subjects could sit down inside a temple to enjoy music together, the result would be a harmonious relationship between all of them. If a father and sons did the same at home, the family would be a good one. If all the members of a clan were willing to gather inside their village to listen to music, there would be no disputes. The music used in temples later gave rise to palace music, which was, of course, enjoyed by the ruler and his nobles only. Confucius, who was of a later generation, came to regard Zhou palace music as something that had come from heaven. On one occasion after listening to it, he said that one could forget the taste of the most delicious meat. In effect, Zhou dynasty rulers aimed to use music concerts to maintain social order through arousing in everyone feelings of harmony, peace and love. We have a common difference between the Western and the Western culture. The Western culture is a spiritual culture. The human spirit is under God. So we have to pray every day, to pray, to sing, 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 to sing. Because in the Western culture, the human being is evil. 可是，在我们东方文化不然，啊，我们不是一个宗教文化，我们的灵魂要靠自己来管，而且把它管好。那怎么管？就是靠道德来管。In 1976, a large trove of bronze ware was discovered in Zhou Yuan in Shanxi Province. The objects themselves and the inscriptions on them indicate just how sophisticated the system of Li and Yue was at the time of the Zhou Dynasty. Well, we'll find out more about this important discovery and its significance in our next program. And thank you for staying with us on New Frontiers. Tune in again next time when we'll bring you more about the roots of China's Li and Yue belief. I'm Ji Xiaojun from CCTV International. Bye for now.